Welcome back to Forza Horizon 5 and we start off by trying to replicate a photo for our treasure hunt. That seems to have done it, treasure challenge complete. And once again it leads us into the maze. Of course that's kind of their thing this month. So <laughs> we expected that. We missed last month so I don't know where it would have been then. So I'm not sure what we can eliminate, unfortunately, but we'll try just looking around the obvious spots first. Well, if it isn't in one of the corners, maybe it's in the middle. And if it's not up here, maybe it's down here. Perfect send-off. <laughs> we say goodbye to the maze. And speaking of goodbyes, it's also our last time to take a picture of our detective tank who is hanging out at the hotel this time. Alright, now that we've got the fetch quests out of the way, we can do some proper driving, hopefully. Starting with a couple of PR challenges that we need to use an S1 Ferrari for. We're also trying to double dip by using one that's considered a track toy. Got to get through the speed zone at an average of about 240 k's an hour, which uh, is not easy, especially with this very sharp corner at the end. Oh, we just made it. I think we beat that by like 0.3 of a kilometer an hour. Perfect. Now that we've done the handling challenge, we can change the downforce to be purely for speed because we've got to try and get through the speed trap, and we are not going nearly fast enough. 280, we need to be going 300 and something. Yeah, 320. I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. Alright, never mind. New Ferrari time. So I had hoped to double dip with that other Ferrari because it was a track toy and I also have a challenge that requires an S1 track toy, but this Ferrari has a much higher top speed, so hopefully we can get to that 320. No, we can't, still. Okay, that's really annoying. Well, we can, but we need a lot more distance, it seems, than what they're giving me. Hmm. Is the runway a bait? Are we meant to actually approach it from this direction? Let's try that, shall we? Because we do have these little corners to negotiate here, but they're not really corners. Then we have a little bit of rough ground before the runway, but it's not really that significant. It's certainly nothing to hit into. And we're already doing the 320 that we need. And that will do nicely. So honestly it might have been a bit of a blessing in disguise that we swapped away from the Ferrari track toy anyway because I'm much more comfortable in my Aston Martin. So let's uh, hop into this. We've just got a sort of figure of eight track it seems, just a very simple raceway. I'm not a fan of those sort of banked corner things. Oh no, there's a lot more to it. Okay, I, I was only looking at the first corner and extrapolating. That will teach me to make assumptions. We've got a lot of these banked turns. Well, hopefully we can get in on the inside on some of these. Three laps of this? Uh, okay, fine. <laughs> not my funnest way of driving, that's for sure. I never know whether or not I should enter high, whether I should try and maintain a steady sort of angle around those corners, or, or what. I try and follow approximately what the other cars do, but I never seem to do it very well, so... <laughs> oh, that one worked alright, but we've still got to catch up. But we've got two more laps to do it in. Seem to catch up with them through that first little straight area and then... Oh well, there we go, we've managed to overhaul them on that corner. Now we've just got to stay ahead, that's going to be the tough thing with these corners, but... I, I can no longer see what they do because now they're behind me, so I've just got to try and do it well enough, I guess. I feel I want to stay reasonably low a lot of the time through the corners, but maybe that's not true. <laughs> It's just I feel then I have more run out, but I guess then the angle is more extreme when I do so, so I probably want to stay in like the second lane and then just accelerate out and then let it just take me to the side. Okay, and then I'm just screwing up on the normal corners now. <laughs> uh, 
that seemed to work all right through that section then just through these sort of chicane areas onto the next banked corner go high and then go into about yeah the second one dip down and out that went all right all right that's acceptable one more lap of that okay i think we might be getting the hang of these now i still don't like them but or at least not failing miserably at it quite so much i still don't like the track where it's just the oval the horizon oval circuit where it's just like five laps of just banked turns i'm not a fan of that i'm not a nascar driver and up to the finish line will it be my best lap maybe if so only just uh, no it will not never mind we still won that's the main thing and with that we are halfway through the season at least we get a volvo c30p now i think it's time to go on to the weekly challenge where we need to drive our jaguar e-type now the important thing to note is that there are a couple of e-types one is uh, the lightweight one from the 70s the original is from the 60s first thing we have to do with it is just take a photo of it once we're finished admiring it we have to take it for a race and win a road race the plaza circuit wasn't far from where i was so we'll start there let's pop inside and see how bad this thing is to drive without any tuning no change of tires or anything like that this is a c-class vehicle it probably has bottle tops for brakes and bin liners for wheels but we'll see how we can go everyone else should be in a similar situation at least there is a dude with a minecraft head all right oh yes this thing wants to go sideways okay <laughs> right we're just gonna have to work that in to how we drive gonna have to brake a lot more than I would like I feel it is always a bit tricky when I've just jumped out of a race ready Aston Martin into something that is very much not that we're fourth currently so we're we're holding a reasonably high position and we've got two more laps to be able to overhaul these guys now it must be said I should have lowered the difficulty can do that with the weekly challenges the rest of the challenges that you have to do for the season or for the series those you have to do with highly skilled opponents when it comes to the daily challenges it's pretty much anything goes so can make it easier on yourself by dropping the ai difficulty but that might not be necessary i also could have made it easier on myself by tuning this thing because nothing says that I couldn't it didn't have a particular category rating or anything but sometimes then they make you spend money on it unfortunately we are up against people who do have tuned cars this guy has a rear splitter on the back so clearly it has some tuning presumably was like a d-class vehicle that has been tuned up into the c-class range we're in a fairly low C class. It was like a 520 or something. But it's entirely possible that we're up against things that are more like 550 or something because we are stock and other things have just been bumped up into our category to meet us. Yeah, it's a bit of a, a bit of a lucky dip sometimes. <laughs> Be interesting to look at the grid and see who we were actually up against. But we've made our way to the front we just now have to stay here so as long as we can keep racing responsibly we've kind of got the feel for the car now a little bit more and you know, we know that the brakes are bad so we brake more than we otherwise would need to we know it's going to want to go sideways so we just need to feather the throttle a bit more just try and use that to our advantage a little bit here and there and just do some sweet drifts why not and down the home straight onto the final lap hopefully it'll be an uneventful one it's very rude how they have that very sharp corner 
right off the straight though. After you've come downhill no less, you've got a lot of momentum. And yet somehow I didn't lose my combo, it counted that as a drift tap. I'm sure I've hit walls lighter before and it's cancelled things, so... Interesting double standards there. And up to the final bend. I don't think we we're going to have a best lap time at all, unfortunately. And 155. That's the other thing. I should have spent a little bit more time tuning it up just to make the lap go faster. Because that's over six minutes that we've spent just on one race. Now, somewhat annoyingly, our final challenge is not really a challenge as such. We just need to stay above 161 k's an hour for over a minute. This is going to be a bit tedious. Funnily enough, I've come to the motorway because that's the only way that I'm going to be able to sustain that sort of speed for that length of time. I don't want to actually go too fast, I just want to stay just above what I need to. So let's just keep it in the 170s. I wish I had cruise control like in Truck Simulator so I could just set it to like 170 and be done with it. But I don't want to go 190 or anything because that means that it'll take less time to traverse the length of the motorway and I won't have the full minute at my disposal to be able to stay above the 160. I also wish there was a way to track it but I don't think you could pin challenges the same way that you do accolades. But uh, we're just going to not take any particular risks. Oh okay, series 1 complete. Seems I vamped for long enough and didn't have to worry. Stepping it up into the 70s now, and what better way than with a Porsche Carrera. We've got three street races to do. Up against a motley assortment of Chevrolets and other Porsches and looks like Ford Escorts or something. Let's hop on the car since we don't need to worry about the sun glare in a street race because they're all in the evening. We do need to worry about traffic though, Exhibit A, and other cars trying to push us into the traffic. Sharp corner up ahead that always catches me out in this race. Porsche usually does brake pretty well though and I have upgraded the brakes and the springs as is my want. I've done nothing to the engine because I think Porsche know what they're doing there. Slide on past into the lead. Now we've just got to hang on to it for the remainder of the race. A little bit of off-road never hurt anyone. Long here is where we're probably going to get caught up by those who have done a few more performance improvements. But then we've got sharp corner into another bend and then another really sharp corner just before the race to the finish. So we should be able to stay ahead. On the inside, nice. Hope that they don't. Oh, and miss the corner. Let's rewind that. <laughs> you know that sharp corner that I mentioned near the end? Yeah, I forgot about it. So let's do this properly, shall we? <laughs> there we go. Was not paying attention to the track at all. Dude behind me is catching up. But too little, too late. Race number two. Which appears to finish at around the same spot as the third race also finishes. It's like you, you tried to link races together, but they both finish at the same point instead of one starting where the other one finishes. I think they could have planned their blueprints a little bit better. Interestingly, it's the Corvettes that have been giving us the best competition, which is not what I would have expected, quite frankly. We braked way too much for that corner. Uh, but they braked for that corner, and I didn't really need to, so I guess it worked out. 
Go slower through an earlier corner so you can go faster through a later one when you're going out onto a straight anyway and want to accelerate to a higher top speed. Gives you a bit of an advantage. Now, traffic and tight bends. Oh, and apparently I missed that checkpoint. They usually give me those. <laughs> Must have gone just slightly too wide. Okay. There we go. Got our tires inside that time, definitely. Sometimes I feel that I've missed it, and somehow it gives it to me. At that time, I felt that I probably got my rear wheel inside, but this car's probably just a bit narrower than I expected. Now I've got the other really skinny one up the head. Just cut through here and hope that they don't miss the traffic. No, they did. That's all right. Through the checkpoint. So many times I've come up to there and there's been traffic right in the way of that corner as well. Ooh, we barely missed that. I think if you give the traffic a little bit of a scrape too, then sometimes it'll just stop or it'll kind of go into an interesting position and... Oh, we just missed the checkpoint again. Okay, rewind. You can tell that it's been a long week when I completely don't pay attention to what I'm doing. Let's go back even further. I don't pay attention to what I'm doing and completely miss corners. When there's missing an apex and then there's missing that there was a corner entirely. There we go. That's twice in the same series. This, this is not a good sign. It's almost an experiment that you want to just nudge a bit of traffic at some point just to get it in the path of your opponents. But realistically, if you race well, you don't need to worry. So it's not really worth the risk. And final race. And you can actually see the purple of the finish line, it seems, off to the right. That's funny. I could just see the flares through the trees. Just because of the way that the track curves around. No missing corners, let alone checkpoints. <laughs> I've missed checkpoints before. And I've missed corners entirely. Let's see if we can do this race cleanly, shall we? As long as we keep missing the traffic, that's the important thing. Once again, they braked too much for the second corner. I was able to take some advantage, not as much as I would like, but we can slide past here. Yes. My upgrades and the handling putting in work. Now the twistier section through here, just got to pay attention and hope that the traffic cooperates. A little bit of a scrape there, but hey maybe that means that they'll be stopped in the path of all of our opponents now. Coming up to the roundabouts. don't go charging through the barrier for a change often that's how I end up taking that roundabout corner and coming up to the finish line which sure enough is just off to the side of where we started if only we could just drive straight through and that gives us another five points on the board just like that unfortunately we can't keep using the same car for different championships in this particular series we need extreme off-road for this one. Thankfully it's not actually an off-road series or cross-country race. It is dirt though. I need to be on the outside of these cars because they just slide around and bounce around too much. It's kind of the opposite rules to what I normally do when it comes to doing cornering. But they're just such a bouncy experience that I have to be on the outside of them. So you can barely see anything from in inside the cab of these. So we've got our electric off-roader 
And sure enough, that's what he's using as well. And then some sort of Baja kitted out thing in the front. We do have a few of as well, but I find that they don't handle very well for my liking. I'm, I'm sure they're great if you know how to use them. I do not. I barely know how to use this thing. That's kind of lack of familiarity more than anything, but... I do also have truckloads of torque, which is great for coming out of these corners. And we have the off-road tyres fitted, so we're good to go. Lap one done, two more, just got to stay ahead. Once again, now that we're in the lead, kind of taking the strategy of braking probably more than I have to, but I can at least kind of block if they do catch up, and it's a lot less lost time than if I was to just crash into the wall and ruin the corner. If I brake too hard, well, at least I'm accelerating out of the corner. Lap two. Much better time. A couple of seconds off there. Let's see if we can improve on that this time. It's the final series of corners to go. Can we get in under the 1 minute 14? A little bit sloppy through there. Ooh, very sloppy through there. That's a shame. By taking the time to talk about it, I've probably thrown it away instead of concentrating like I should have. Never mind. We're still well ahead of our opposition. Yeah, outside of best time, never mind. Up to the canyons now for the next race. Where we work our way up the ridge and then wind our way down into the canyon floor again. I don't feel it would make more sense to do it the other way around. I like a twisty hill climb section. We don't really get a dirt one of those, I don't think. There's a road one up the volcano. There's already a dirt one down the other side of the volcano. We don't really have a dirt hill climb. Alright, now we've got to remember that there's actually a corner here. Well, he didn't. The problem is, I try and break responsibly, and then someone just goes into the back of me. Normally that's me doing it to them, so I guess there's fair. a bit rough on some of these corners I think. Not many corners that we can cut, it's quite a skinny road. But we can lean on them a little bit for some help around the corners. Okay we can take a bit of a straighter line through here than they do. It's always handy. Don't care about my combo, I'm just gonna slam into him to get around the corner faster. We are speed running this season a little bit. Thanks to once again leaving it to the last minute. And onto the road again for the final stretch. Because of course. What dirt race would be complete without a road section to finish it off? They should have made a dirt track go along the railway or something. Never mind. Last sprint, the Bahio Trail. We start off on the plains and I think we work our way through to the jungle. And once again starting on the road because of course our off-road tyres not really helping us here. Uh, here we go. Time to get on the rough stuff. Clean racing, just slightly nudge on the way out, and it all goes away. Never mind, we're just kind of playing with our lunch at this point, because we've got the championship in the bag so long as we finish at least third. Obviously we do want to win, but we do automatically, uh, subconsciously, take it a little bit easier on the last race sometimes. This track is also one that's usually given me a bit of trouble for some reason. I don't quite know why, I just didn't quite seem to gel with the corners. Obviously. <laughs> Hence I keep losing my combo. 
No, maybe I'm trying too hard to just stay in the track, and I can see even the AI is running wide of the track sometimes. Maybe that's just the way to go. So it's very dusty, and that's the thing, is it, it's quite slippy. You almost want to be on the side of the road a lot more to take advantage of the, the grass. Ooh, that wasn't good, though. We just got an awkward bounce through there and nearly missed the checkpoint. It's a case of, well, we either get the checkpoint or we get the corner and well we need to get the checkpoint above all else oh that was good though that jump worked to our advantage for a change fairly sure that has twisted me completely the wrong direction a lot of the time but instead it just led me straight into the side of our opponent and they helped us through the corner perfect that worked out much better than i thought Well, you know how we were glad that the last one wasn't a cross-country race? Yeah. This time we're out of luck. And we're in buggies. Which are rubbish. This one isn't even tuned up, so I don't even know how competitive it is against my opponents. This might just be a no-go for me. I might have to down-tune something good that I have instead. Otherwise we've just got to try and take these corners as well as we can, cut them as much as we can. This track has a fair amount of opportunity for that. Yep, see, we can work our way through the field a little bit there. These look like glorified golf carts ahead of us. I just always feel that these are just so obnoxious as vehicles. I don't really like them at all. But never mind, uh, we do what we have to. Maybe we tune this a little bit before the next race. Or we find if we've got any others that we can tune up or down into the right category. I have to be in a B class. I'm fairly sure I've got a few A class buggies. And if I've got more than I need in that category, then I can always down tune some into this one. Well, if it'll let me. But while I've been monologuing, we have worked our way into second place because they keep hitting things, which is normally my job, so I'll take that. This is a course with a lot of obstacles in it through the airfield, so you do have to be mindful of that. I have been being mindful of that, so that's helped me get ahead and hopefully we can stay ahead. Just got to avoid this detritus around the place can also be used constructively to kind of help break for the corners, admittedly, but more often than not it's just going to slow you down. So let's just start turning nice and early because this is the only checkpoint in this corner. The next checkpoint is all the way down here. That little twist off the log actually helped us around the corner a little bit. It did slow us down a fair bit. So now the others are catching up again. So we probably can't get away with doing that again. But all of the obstacles are now back in play, so we've just got to let them hit them again, hopefully. They kind of expect that because you're in front, you're probably going to hit them. And we just have to defy their expectations. Ignore the road, and instead make our own line through this corner. Right, final corner. We just need to try and do this a bit better. So we don't really want to go on the inside of those trees like we did last time. That was just a bit too slippy. That's much better. You can stay inside the line a lot more. And across the line. There we go. That wasn't so bad after all. And from one obstacle-ridden course to another, now we're racing around the temple grounds. Seems very irresponsible. Our acceleration is horrific in this. I thought we did have good tyres, but maybe we don't. We might just have off-road tyres, not the race tyres. Maybe that's the difference. Not sure. Either way, we'll see if we can work our magic again. We're fairly light at least. That kind of cuts both ways, but... Another case where we can cut the corner fairly well and then run off wide. Through here, we want to avoid as much of the water as we can because it just slows us down. Once again, turn around here. Ooh, 
he got in our way a little bit, but the other dude made up for it by letting us get around the corner. Now back into the temple complex. I hate every time I have to brake because I know the acceleration on this is not very good. Oh, and it just slid and lost all of my speed. That's not good when I've still got three people ahead of me. Need to learn to feather the throttle a lot more on this vehicle. This we can let the hill do a lot of the work for us for the braking. A little bit wide, but not too bad. Once again, jump through. Stay to the right. Now, this is where we had issues last time. There we go, that's a bit better. Oh, still went quite wide, unfortunately, but... Yeah. Lost all our advantage by going far too wide there. Oh, and now, this is the corner that I almost missed. Here's where we slid so much. It's because it's a much looser surface. But we handled that one better. On to the final lap. One more ahead of us. Can we just chase him down? So far so good. Let's just stay here. As long as we don't forget about this corner this time. Ooh, that's a big slide. That's not good. That's not good at all. Just gotta keep it together for this bit. Alright, that's better just enough to stay ahead and winning the circuit races is quite important because now we have a sprint race and i never do as well at those in the cross country generally you don't have the ability to gain the familiarity with them of going around a course three times funnily enough you've just got to take it as it comes I don't like redoing races over and over again just to learn them. You got in my way very badly there. That's annoying. Still, we do have the presence of mind of only having to come third. Which is just as well because we have so much flotsam ahead of us and two others have streaked off into the lead. So let's see what we can do to haul them in. This is, this is a good line. Stay low intersect them a bit yep there we go i was hoping to actually use him to go around the corner but didn't quite manage it but we're right up next to our compatriot here this is an awkward corner Ooh, that's not good i'm way offline yeah never mind we did well ish <laughs> second might just have to do and we race into the stadium we'll be second but that's fine we've got enough points that we will still win the championship and that is what really matters and with that the season is done we can get our bath 695 now unfortunately we've got less than four hours remaining it's late at night i'm not quite gonna have time to get our nissan savari because I missed an entire season because I was not home so that was a bit difficult to accrue those points funnily enough but never mind I'm not sure I care too much about Nissan Safari I bet it'll come up somewhere in the rotation in future so I already missed out on the chaser and the two jets which are kind of the two that I wanted from the series perfectly honest but never mind up next back to the 90s perfect new badges new clothing a lot of neon I bet new cars and a new collectible. All that and more starting next week. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you then.